now that we have a nice RPM range, let's deal with our idle loop. Sounds like this. So the idea with this idle loop is um, that of course this is what the car would sound like if there is no throttle at all and the car basically isn't moving. So we only really want to hear this sound when the RPM is at zero, or in our case between zero and one, let's say, so no acceleration at all. For this reason I don't really want to use auto pitch because otherwise we'll hear a change in the pitch between zero and one, uh, which is not how idle sounds if you like. So what we're going to do is have the low RPM come down to 1. I'm just going to get rid of the fade for the moment. And we need to make these two sounds congruous. Okay, so there's a bit of a jump there. So how are we going to manage that? Well, this method I've come up with here, if we're going to copy this idle, and we're going to paste it, another version of it here, so we're going to have two versions of this idle sound, one which really is idle and one which helps, if you like, the really low RPM range um, kind of blend together and sound good. So what we're going to do is turn on auto pitch for this one. I'm going to lower the pitch of the main idle sample just slightly. Okay, and this is so that this idle loop, this one here, can have a pitch at zero that's less than one. Let's try there. So those are seamless there. And then what we want to do is adjust the pitch so that this can ramp up a bit. To do that, we need to change the root pitch. Okay, and how does the low one sound? So a little bit of tuning again. So without fades it's not working very well, let's put quite a long fade on this and on our tuned idle loop, let's see how it sounds now. It's got a bit of a problem there. So you get the idea, um, I am literally going through that problem that I described earlier, which is of course where if we adjust one of these parameters and adjust another, then it will affect the other one, because of course we're determining the pitch at zero, but we're starting at one, and then we're determining the pitch at a later point uh, where the root pitch is, and so if we change one, the whole gradient of the pitch slope will change. I think we've got this somewhere close to working now. If I bring this down slightly, and if we make the fades long, how does this sound? So I'm not very happy with the very end of this. Let's see if I can tweak that up a little bit. Uh, maybe a slightly longer fade. So uh, I'm happy with the way this idle loop works. Uh, it's just the way this low RPM works. What happens if we do a fade like this? So 
So I'm thinking an even longer fade might make it smoother. There we go, I'm happy with that. Something you may have noticed that happens in FMOD, uh, despite the fades on these containers, you can sometimes hear them sort of jump or glitch. There. Okay, can you, you can see it in the meters perhaps if you can't uh, hear it, but the lowest RPM sort of jumps up, uh, ignoring this fade, and then catches on. Um, first of all, I found that this doesn't really occur when you actually use FMOD inside a game engine like Unity. Um, it tends to smooth over these things or not be so noticeable. Uh, if this is being a problem, then what you can do is uh, move all the fades into volume automation like this and put the containers back to being uh, all the way through the RPM range. And of course what that means is the sample will always be playing and looping. Uh, it's just whether or not the fader comes up and you can hear it. So that's a solution to that problem if it persists. So that's not bad. What can we do to improve on this? A couple of little tricks that I have learnt. The first is to add a little bit of distortion. And we're going to automate this distortion all the way up the range. So we're going to start with none. We're going to end up with some. And let's have a listen. I'm going to make it less linear. So I just want to make sure that it doesn't start adding distortion, let's say, until around 20%, uh, and then we get a kind of exponential ramp up. So that's not bad. It gives it just that little bit of extra oomph up there. Something else we can do, we could do something similar here with EQ. I'm just going to automate the low EQ here to go from say zero to again let's see how it sounds up here at the top so i'm going to go for just about three dbs And again, this change doesn't need to happen until about, let's say, halfway through the process. And what this does well to mimic, let's say, the increase in air that would be rushing over the car as we were moving fast. Remember, this car was recorded on rollers, so it didn't have any air rushing past. That EQ gives a little help there. So there we go, really. That's my adaptive van engine in three, maybe four samples. And this is the full range of its RPM. So FMOD has this script called Engine Designer, and if you open it up, it will tell you that you need uh, an event that has RPM and load. So basically, um, a really professionally designed uh, engine will have RPM to determine the speed of the engine, but it also then have load to change the sound between when, let's say you're going uphill or downhill, so when the engine is stressed or not stressed, or just the difference between going fast, as in having a high RPM, or accelerating fast, where the engine is, of course, under a lot of load. So load tends to go between minus 1 and 1, so we have negative load downhill and of course positive load uphill and 0 when we're in between. So if you were a professional sound designer working on a, a real car game, then of course you would be recording 
uh, load on and load off samples. Now we didn't have that in our sample range and that's not really what I was trying to demonstrate with this video. Uh, but what we can do is sort of fake it. So uh, in order to use the script, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So what we have here is our load uh, at zero. I don't want there to be any change from the engine that we have in place. But what we're going to do is add uh, a bit more distortion, let's say, when we are approaching high loads. So I'm just going to increase the RPM. So at high load, how much louder do we want to be? And at negative load, I want to have no distortion at all. So that's going to make a very slight difference. We can also make a change with our low EQ that we've already automated. That is already ramping up with high RPM. Uh, we're just going to add a bit with the load as well. And we're going to take some away for negative load. Not too much. Uh, what I'm hearing now, when we start to automate the low frequencies, that's 440 hertz, and when we start to automate that down, we start to have this kind of whistling sound in the engine uh, in the high frequencies, so I'm also going to automate that. I want no change as it goes up, um, but I do want some negative change in low load. There we go. So just some subtle automation changes there. And what this means is that if we turn on our engine, we can then go and use this script where it will balance the way RPM and load work together, the way they sort of interrelate. So if you increase the RPM a lot, the load will go up. But then of course, as you reach that RPM, the load will go down. Have a listen to how it works. That's how it works with the engine designer. You can hear the load coming on and off relative to the changes in RPM. There you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for listening.